Press your way through that troubled marriage. Press your way through that dead end job. Press your way through the hate. Press your way through the lies. Press your way through your addictions. It's not over. God has sent forth a word that will bring you from darkness to light, from night to day, from death to life, from bad to good, from sinful to freed, redeemed, healed, restored, forgiven, and cleansed. God has sent forth a word that will suddenly propel you into your destiny at hyperspeed. That word is live. He is telling us to live. The devil can't stop it. The enemies can't stop it. Once God speaks a word, it will not it will not return unto him void, but it will accomplish all, the whole extent of everything which he sent it to do. That dream God gave you is activated. Believe it and walk in it. That desire for marriage is activated. Believe it and walk in it. Like it's already happened. That means don't entertain swine, wolves in sheep clothing. That house you want to buy, the children you desire to have, is activated. That dream car or job you want is activated. That joy you want to experience while you're going through, it's activated. That peace yes. which surpasses all understanding that you yearn for while you're having a panic attack, it's activated. You, that healing that you need is activated. Amen. That deliverance that you need is activated. Amen. God's favor will take you places that money can't. Nothing is too hard for him. Nothing is impossible for him. Yes. He is the author and the creator. No one can undo what he has done. No one can snatch us from out of God's hands. Amen. So if God is telling you to live, to press on, then you better press on and live. Live through that sickness. Live through that person leaving you for someone else. That's okay, because what God has for you is for you. Amen. Live through that eviction. Live through that loss of a loved one. Live through that molestation and rape. Live. I was molested countless times by friends and family, and I wanted to kill myself because of it. They made it seem like it was my fault, and over time, I blamed myself, too. I was so shameful because it was incest. I was so guilty because I didn't say anything for the longest. I didn't tell on them like I knew I should have, but I was scared. I was scared that no one would believe me or that the people involved would try to make it seem like I wanted it to happen. And at one point, when I did tell, that's exactly what happened. I was to blame for all of it. But... As I sat on that window ledge about to commit suicide, God spoke a word that gave me peace and a newfound hope. He whispered in my spirit and he told me to live. Yes. Thank you, God. It's all right. Bless God. Bless God. Bless God. Amen. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Not in darkness. I wiped my tears and I did just that. Though I was walking through the valley of the shadow of death, I emerged in the light when I chose to forgive my abusers more than 10 years later. I chose to forgive myself for being addicted to pornography and masturbation for over 15 years. So there is life after your shame. There is life after your guilt. There is life after your pain. There is life after your sins. It doesn't end here. It doesn't have to end here. So don't let that be the case for you. In the midst of all these things, there is light, there is hope, love, joy, peace, faithfulness, goodness, kindness, patience, meekness, blessings, purity, restoration, redemption, salvation. There is still a plan, a promise for your life, as the Lord declares in Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. But the promise doesn't stop there. The Lord continues on to say in verses 13 and 14, If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. I will be found by you, says the Lord. I will end your captivity and restore your fortunes. I will gather you out of the nations where I sent you and bring you home again to your own land. Wow. If you look for him wholeheartedly, you will find him. It doesn't say that if you look for him wholeheartedly that he might be there, that he changed his mind because you... Because you had too many sins. No, it says you will find him. Amen. He will be found by you. He will end your captivity and restore your fortunes. Yes. Restore everything that you lost, but give it to you better than when you first had it. Yes. Because when God does something, he goes all out for his glory. Yes. He yes. will gather you out of the nations, out of the darkness, and bring you home again to your own land, back into the light, into the safety of God's embrace, yes. back into the light, to the path lighted by his word. Live in the lights of the Lord. Amen. Amen. John 4, 50 through 53 says, Jesus then said, your son will live. Yes. Go home to him. 
The man believed Jesus and started back home. Some of the official servants met him along the road and told him, your son is better. He asked them when the boy got better and they answered, the fever left him yesterday at one o'clock. The, boy, the boy's father realized that at one o'clock the day before, Jesus had told him, your son will live. So the man and everyone in his family put their faith in Jesus. You will live in the midst of darkness. God will water you with his word while you're going through. You will 